G'day and welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds everyone well. I uh, just wanted to show you today the process that I use for fixing uh, chromatic or colour aberrations and issues uh, through Adobe Camera Raw. It's a fairly quick and easy process and not something that usually requires a great amount of time uh, as the uh, issues are generally obvious and the solution is fairly quick which is a good thing. So firstly, just want to start with exactly what uh, chromatic aberration is. So chromatic aberration is also known as color fringing and it's when you have uh, different uh, color frequencies, so primarily red, green and blue, that aren't able to focus correctly uh, on to the imaging sensor or uh, film plane. So it happens regardless of whether or not you're shooting digital or film. Uh, and generally the cheaper your lens or the lower quality your lens, the more obvious the chromatic aberration becomes. It's one of the features of more expensive uh, and better quality lenses uh, to, to deal with that chromatic aberration. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that even if you have an expensive lens that you're not going to see it. Uh, for example, uh, both these lenses that these uh, two images that I have as examples were shot with uh, professional quality lenses. Uh, they certainly cost uh, the level of professional quality lenses and uh, they still have chromatic aberration. So it is something that you will see uh, on the vast majority of consumer um, lower end right through to professional lenses. Obviously some lenses, uh, the better quality they are, the less you'll see, uh, but the, it, can, it can still happen. So it's certainly something to be aware of. So generally speaking, when you look at an image, um, the whole image on a screen, you're not generally going to see it. So it's only when you zoom into certain areas that you will actually see the chromatic aberration. So I've got two images here. One was shot uh, under the Eiffel Tower in Paris uh, a few years ago. And this other one is uh, photographed on the Gold Coast. So it was a morning uh, scene on the beach, uh, a little bit overexposed. I might just drop that exposure just a little bit just to bring it back to a more acceptable level. And both of them do have chromatic aberration in them. So there's two methods, an automatic and a manual process that you can employ to remove that chromatic aberration. Uh, but it is still there nonetheless. Now just to talk about the lenses that we used, uh, I don't normally talk about or really care too much about what uh, gear I've photographed with uh, as I have a range of cameras that I use. Both of these cameras were shot with a 5D Mark III uh, and one was shot with a 24-70 to 70, uh, f2.8 L series lens which is this uh, top image of, uh, of the Eiffel Tower. Bottom one was shot with a 17-40 to 40 L series lenses. Uh, L series lens. Now both lenses are beautiful lenses, they're sharp, they work really well and uh, I've built my professional career out of using both of these lenses uh, extensively. Uh, in fact I've, they're probably the two L series lenses that I've owned the longest and uh, they've certainly served me well and been used to shoot hundreds of thousands of images. However, as I mentioned earlier, even though they are a pro quality lens, they do have their issues. So it's definitely worth uh, just having a look at this video and seeing what um, process I go through to identify the chromatic aberration and obviously what do I do to fix it. So let's start with this one. Often you'll see chromatic aberration when there's edges with um, one side of the edge that has uh, bright, uh, quite a bright part of the image. So for example in this we've got the dark framework and steel of the Eiffel Tower and we've got a bright sky behind it. So if we just zoom right in really close, we're zooming in a lot on this one so we're up around 650 to 700%. You can see that there's a color fringing around the edges of where the steelwork meets the sky. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably thinking, and rightly so, that, well, okay, you've had to zoom in a lot there. You're probably not going to see it. Um, what's the point of even worrying about it? Well, for a lot of situations, if you're just putting photos on social media, absolutely, you're probably not going to see it. However, sometimes you actually can. And the other scenario worth considering is if you print your images, then absolutely you will generally see it, particularly if you're printing your images large, which I, I tend to do quite a bit. So it's worth considering that uh, 
dealing with a chromatic aberration, as I mentioned, it's a fairly quick and easy process to deal with it, and that way you don't have to worry about it, whether you're printing digitally on a billboard or a fine art print. Let's have a look at this other image. So we've got a uh, beautiful blue sky, uh, we've got buildings that are mostly uh, brighter in colour, mostly white or very light grey, uh, and let's just zoom in and see what we can find. Now on this building you can see there's quite a bit of that colour aberration or chromatic aberration I should say or colour fringing which it's also known as and generally speaking the two colours that we've seen are what you will see with chromatic aberration where it looks like a sort of purple or orangey and green or cyan fringing that's the, the quite a common colour that you will see uh, so you can see that it's evident in both of these images, again, even though I've shot with professional quality uh, lenses, that chromatic aberration is definitely there. So what can we do about it? Well, let's go over to our uh, tools tab on the right hand side here, just under the histogram. And you'll see that there's a little tool called lens correction, and it actually looks like the inside of a lens, if you've ever seen a diagrammatic representation of a lens. So if we just click on that one, we can see we have profile and we have manual. Under profile, we have what's called remove chromatic aberration. Now, if I click on that, you can see it disappears. In fact, that automatic uh, remove chromatic aberration option of just simply checking that box has pretty much removed everything that we need to be concerned about. So you can see that looks really clean now. If we have a look at the Paris photo and we click on remove chromatic aberration, it's pretty much done the same. You can see there's really no evidence there of chromatic aberration at all, which is great. That's the result that we wanna go after. Sometimes, however, even checking that box, remove chromatic aberration, means that there is some color fringing still left behind. So what I'm gonna do for both of those images, I'm just gonna control and select both of those. I'm gonna remove that checkbox so that we have that chromatic aberration so we can go through the manual approach of how to remove it so that you know what to do if in the instance you've checked that box but you still have some color fringing. So let's start with the Gold Coast image. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and zoom back in over to this section on the left hand side because it's quite pronounced, you can see it there. I'm going to click on the manual tab and you can see that with the defringe you have a purple amount and a green amount which is exactly the colours that I mentioned earlier that you generally see. So that clearly identifies that generally the issue falls as a purple uh, colour fringing uh, which you can see there on the vertical and a green uh, colour fringing which you can also see there on the vertical and horizontal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with putting the purple amount and the green amount up to four. You can see there that uh, we've got the option right up to 20. So, but I'm just going to start with four. And what we've got below is another um, uh, little option where you can click and drag uh, those tabs, as you can see, and open up. Now that section in between those tabs is the section of color that the tool is trying to remove. So we can drag it all the way to the left where it's kind of orange, or all the way to the right where it's almost a blue sort of color. However, if we look at the color of the fringing, it is uh, aqua sort of cyan green that we're seeing there. And if we click and drag that along, you can actually see that color disappear. Now, if the color of the fringing that you're getting is outside of that color, you can open up that tool so that it covers more colors and hopefully gets rid of it. So that's, that's given us a pretty good result so far. Excellent. All right, now with the purple color fringing, you can see that that purple was almost an orange sort of color. So we just want to move that around. I'm actually just gonna move that green one back because that was outside of what we actually needed. And I'm just going to move that around, that purple one around. There we go. That looks great. That's actually removed the majority of that color fringing. 
Now, if we've identified the color range and we've stood a little bit there, we can actually increase the amount of green that it's going to remove or increase the amount of purple that it's going to remove. So that's a great result as well. Let's just have a look at the before and after. You can see between those two images that the vast majority of fringing has actually been removed, which is a great result. Now, if we move back to that image from Paris and we do the same thing, let's just zoom in there. There we go. There's all that fringing. Increase the purple amount. We're going to go up to five this time and green will go up to five as well. Now you can see the fringing here is almost like a teal or a blue, so that's worth considering. And the purple is almost like an orange. So just adjusting that purple amount and that green amount as well as the purple hue, so which part of the color spectrum we want that to affect, you can see that we've actually removed pretty much all of that color fringing. That's a really good result. Excellent. All right. So that's how you adjust the amount of color and the hue of color or the section of color across a color spectrum for the defringing to take effect on your image. Remember, always start or consider using the checkbox to remove chromatic aberration. I find that 99% of the time that works really well or gets me to a really good starting point. However, if you find you need to uh, give more attention to the color fringing or chromatic aberration that you're seeing in your images, then you have the manual option there as well. Definitely worth considering. Uh, and that certainly helps to remove the majority of that color fringing that we're gonna see, which if we printed this image quite large, would be really obvious. Now zooming out, you can see it, there's really you can't see any difference on this screen and this is a 4k screen so you would expect to see difference there however uh, when you zoom in and certainly if you're printing large as I mentioned straight away you can see all of that color fringing uh, and it's all been removed on the right hand side so definitely worth considering generally speaking for my editing as soon as I import images into Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, I'll select them all and I'll check the Remove Chromatic Aberration box. And that gets me to a good starting point. Later on, if there's any images that I identify uh, where a little bit more work is required, then I'll go through and manually uh, edit those images to remove any remaining uh, color fringing that, uh, that might be apparent. Otherwise, it does a great job. You've probably also noticed the Enable Profile Correction uh, checkbox underneath. Now, if we go to the Paris image, oh, sorry, if we go to the Gold Coast image, which was shot on a wider angle lens, you can see that there's a little bit of uh, distortion there. Now, and a little bit of uh, darkening around the edges as well, because it is quite a wide angle lens. Now, if I click Enable Profile Corrections, you can see that it does uh, deal with some of the issues of that wide angle lens. You can see it's actually even through the metadata identified which lens it is. Now you've also got, once you check that enable profile correction, uh, some options down the bottom there for distortion and vi vignetting uh, where you can uh, make further adjustments. You can see I'm making some adjustments there and the distortion from you know such a wide angle lens and a wide angle lens that was shot at 17mm uh, gives us the option to uh, correct some of that distortion that you naturally see with a wide angle lens. And you've also got some options there for the, the natural vignetting that you'll see with wide angle lenses as well. Now it's up to you. Sometimes it can be a, a nice darkening of the outer parts of the image, helps keep the focus on the central part of the image. However, if it's not working for the results that you're after, you can certainly make those adjustments as needed. Going back over to the manual tab, you can see that there is um, some more manual settings for distortion and vignetting, which you can use uh, to further correct your images if you need to. However, just 
As always, season to taste, small adjustments and small corrections to just see what works and what helps you to get the results that you're after. Hope this video has been helpful today. Thanks for stopping by and look forward to seeing you in the future. Take care.